Hey, it's Chuck Armstrong with Loudwire Nights, and this is Loudwire Nights On Demand. What can I say other than Dave Mustaine of Megadeth was our special guest on the show? Yeah, I don't need to say anything else, man. This aired on Friday, August 23rd. I know you'll enjoy this one. Megadeth will forever be celebrated as one of the greatest metal bands of all time, whether it's as part of the Big Four or simply for their massive catalog of classic albums, including their most recent 2022's The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead. And on top of all of that, they'll also always be celebrated for their live shows. And they're on the road right now with Mudvayne and all that remains. And uh, hanging with us tonight is the man behind it all, Dave Mustaine. Dave, thank you so much for being here, man. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. So, you know, 16 studio albums over the course of 40 plus years, countless tours all over the world. You know, you and the band will always be part of conversations when it comes to the all time greats. Uh, do you allow yourself to think much about that, you know, to, to, to reflect, to look back, to think about all that you've done, your successes, your highs, your accolades, and where you're at today? I think that um, looking back can be uh, really rewarding, but it also can be very dangerous because you can uh, choose to rest on your laurels and then you start believing your own hype. Um, for us, we've always been... Uh, myself, I should say, uh, I've always been interested in in the melody and, and the heaviness of the songs. You know, somebody was talking with me yesterday and said something about uh, playing fast means, means heavy. And I said, well, I don't necessarily agree with that because Black Sabbath is one of the heaviest bands in the world and they're not fast. You know, they've got some songs that are fast, but most of their songs are super heavy, uh, slow songs. So... I guess the uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So for sure, man, that's a it's a good way to put it. And yeah, certainly Sabbath is a great example of you know that there's not one formula for what heavy means or what even what you know what fast or or dark or anything like that means. Right. Right. Well, you know, and I, I think your latest album is a good testament to the legacy of Megadeth, but also the fact, yeah, you you guys don't rest on your laurels and you you are moving ahead. Right. You're not just some nostalgic act you're still creating significant relevant new music um you know this this marks your first album with drummer dirk verbeeren uh you're no stranger to making sure you've got the best people in the right spots in the band what do you look for when you're adding someone to the fold like you know wh what's the most important thing to you above above anything else um i guess they're the uh, one of the most important things is who they are as a person you know they can be great players and i've had great players that um were really uh, hard to uh, get into a relationship with. And I'm not saying that that's anybody's fault. Uh, you know, I have such, uh, you know, I have a part in all this stuff too. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I guess what I'm looking for uh, besides the talent part is just, you know, whether or not they're going to be able to handle the the uh, air at this altitude because, you know, as you get more successful, uh, the, the pressures change and they increase. Well, how, how over the years, how have you personally adapted to, to that, to the air at that level? Well, it's something that if you are paying attention on the way, you're going to naturally make that progression. If you're not, and you're interested in the party and, and, uh, Getting up on stage is just something you do in between uh, curls or in between uh, buzzes or, or binges or whatever. Um, that's different for me. I, I'm into this because I love playing. I, I love the feeling it gives me when I hit a super loud, powerful chord. Um, riffs like... Uh, the Conjuring and and stuff like Reckoning Day and Thread in the Fugitive Mind. There are so many songs that have super heavy riffs, hook and mouth, kick the chair. I can go on and on. Yeah. Um, and uh, that's that. It's important that you find someone who can play like that. So uh, listening to them and hearing what they do on their own is really a, a treat sometimes when you discover somebody who naturally creates music that's similar with yours. Well, and, and to just what you said, you know, you do this because you still love it. And so I imagine as, as you consider the, the, the shape and the life of the band itself, you know, that, that's such a significant thing too, not just their personal character or, or getting into a relationship with them, not just their skills, but also like 
why are they in this? Because you, you're not here 40 plus years later, 16 albums later, uh, if you don't love this, right? <laughs> like you, you could not, I don't think there's any way you could last if you're just going buzz to buzz or, or girl to girl, whatever that looks like. Yeah, I, I, I agree. You can also see the maturity of the person involved on, on what their desires are when they come out here, you know, it's pretty much like Willy Wonka, you know, you, you come here and you see all the shining lights and all the glitter and, and all the uh, accolades and uh, fans and kisses and uh, all the hugs and high fives and handshakes and all of the, you're so great comments. Um, you really have to uh, be humble to keep mental health through all of this stuff because like i said earlier if you believe the hype you're gonna you're gonna be really hard to be around yeah absolutely man and 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 again like you want to make sure that the people who are around you are kind of you know at least trying to seek a similar vibe right so that i don't know i have to imagine if there if there is a different personality in the midst of that on the road in the studio whatever that looks like then you know it's a lot easier to to for the, for everything to kind of start falling apart. Yeah, when you find somebody that's got the same musical uh, leanings and and desires that you do, that's really neat because it's like you know two uh, beggars finding a crust of bread that they share <laughs> together, and, and uh, the bond when you find somebody who likes the same music that you do. Uh, supersedes just about anything else because you can both like the same football team, baseball, basketball, food, beverage. But when you like the same band, that's different. That's exactly right, man. And and even, you know, like I think of just me as a fan, right? Like I go to a, if I go to a football game and I sit next to a complete stranger and, you know, we cheer for the same team, you know, we're going to have a good time. We'll connect. But if I go to a right. concert and I stand in line waiting for the gates to open, and I'm, you know, standing next to a complete stranger, like we get deep, you know, you get deep into your love for that band. And then that just expands and expands. So you're definitely right. There is, you know, whether, you know, whether it's from your perspective as, as this, you know, as, as the guy in Megadeth or my perspective as the guy waiting in line to see Megadeth, there is that, there's something so special about that connection to liking the same band, liking the same music, being in that world together. I agree. I agree. Well, you know, I mentioned uh, I mentioned Dirk uh, on drums with this new album, and then after the album, Timu joined on guitars, and you guys are on the road now. Ha- have you seen, uh, or maybe not, but, but the dynamic of Megadeth change with with Timu uh, on board? Well, we uh, are a band again. It doesn't feel like it. <laughs> and uh, uh, some uh, side players or some session guys. Um, not that it, it felt like that with any of the previous lineups, but that was one of the fears that I had. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I I feel like um, Kiko did us a, a really huge uh, courtesy by helping us find Temu because with Kiko needing to step down, I thought I was going to finish my career out with Kiko. And, and when things came up with him, um, he uh, couldn't tour anymore because he needed to be home for his kids. So I see he's touring again, which I'm happy that he's still playing. Um, but uh, he had to go home. And when he did, he introduced us to Temu. And, and uh, it was, it was an even, uh, even closer uh, connection between me and Temu than uh, Kiko and I had. We'll always be friends. But um, uh, this new relationship I have is... Uh, um, it. it harkens me back to the days when we had Marty Friedman in the band and, and the four of us actually felt like a band. Yeah. Well, I, I got to say too, I, I have to imagine, man, all these years, all of these successes, all these, you know, fill in the blank into your career to still be at this point where you get to experience new things or make new relationships. You know, you're not, you're not past all that. Right. But you can still, meet someone and and feel that excitement again yeah i i can still uh i i still feel that excitement yeah i love i love hearing that man well you know you mentioned um looking back is nice but but you also you know never want to rest on your laurels and it uh megadeth has never been one to do that but also you guys never seem like you're 
just churning out music for the sake of it, right? You're not just releasing an album for the sake of releasing an album. Uh, and I have to imagine that's probably even truer the longer you do this. You know, I am curious, though, from Dystopia to The Sick, The Dying, and The Dead, you know, we waited six years. Obviously, there was uh, a global pandemic in between there, too, and, and a, a few, you know, things like that. But uh, are you thinking about the next full length at this point? Yes, we are. We're not, uh, we're not going to be taking as long in between offerings as we did this time. You know, you're right. There were a lot of setbacks, the uh, pandemic, the blockade, the uh you name it. It's just so many things that went on, the cancer treatment, the yeah. uh, lineup change, having to start from scratch with a new bassist, um, you know, and uh, the cancer treatment also was difficult on the guys because they're watching me go through all this stuff. And, you know, one day I would be seemingly normal. The other day I would be so medicated that I couldn't stay awake. And and that was hard for the guys to see. Um you know, I, I had two days that I was really, really sick that I uh, threw up out of the whole treatment. I thought that was really good. Um, you know, I was I was fighting with everything, every moral fiber of my being to make sure that I, I uh, stayed in the game because they kept saying over and over again, if you don't if you don't eat, if you lose weight, we're going to put a tube in you. And I thought yeah. I'm not that so um i got so serious and and uh we were we started to pick up the pace when we were doing the record and then we had this lineup change thing and uh yeah i don't like getting into the details about it because uh, you know yeah. dave dave was uh my friend for many many years and and even still you know uh, in, in a matter of faith we're still brothers but uh this was uh, something we needed to change and um you know i i uh I, I painfully did so and we've we had steve de giorgio come in uh from testament and uh he really delivered he was a great guy and uh, just masterful player um uh, really liked him a lot you know we uh we talked a lot about his availability to play with us if we uh uh if we had tour dates come up until we found a permanent player and um, I, I thought about that and I just thought, no, I, I don't want to do that to Eric and the guys in Testament because Eric and I uh, and um, uh, Alex, we're, we're all, you know, we're, we're, we're guitar players. So we're close with one another and, and, you know, poaching somebody's player, uh, I don't think is cool. Plus Steve had integrity um, where uh, he, he, he was there to play on the record and everything. And any talk of anything other than that, um, it, it just never germinated. And and w just to be clear for the record, we never tried to steal uh, Steve. I think he would tell you that. Yeah, um, yeah. We, we were talking about situations where if we had a concert, we needed him to come in and do a one-off. Sure. Yeah, no, no, that, that makes sense. I appreciate that, man. And, and it's exciting too to think, you know, that you are you're looking ahead and and especially not just looking ahead and and you know doing a new record, but the fact that, you know, you said you guys feel like a band and you've hit that point and you've got these new relationships and and uh so it's exciting to think, you know, and I have to imagine for you too <laughs> as you are uh, writing or or preparing or whatever that looks like for a new record to think, yeah, this does feel complete. You know, this 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 feels like a band and uh it's just what a what a cool next step in this ongoing journey for Megadeth. Yes, I agree. I agree. So, you know, I, I know you've spent time in Nashville. You've recorded in Nashville. You know, I think, you know, maybe have a residence in Nashville. Um, and, you know, I think about that. Uh, I hold that with the fact that over the last four decades, man, you've written some incredible hooks, whether we're talking guitar riffs or lyrics or whatever. Have you ever been approached to do co-writing in Nashville? Obviously, lots of writers, lots of hooks, lots of things like that. A little different than Megadeth sometimes, but I'm just curious if if you've ever been approached for that. I did. I was. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, just because you go sit down with somebody and try and write something doesn't mean it's going to pan out. Yeah. So, was it uh, was it in the same vein of, of Megadeth? A little different? Oh, no, no. It was just an artist that uh, yeah. was something... Um, I, I don't even know what happened to the song anymore. No. Um, well, yeah, there's been times when I've done stuff with people and, and just for the fun of it. And, um, 
you know, that that's always neat when you get into the studio and just kind of play. That's the mentality that music used to be like instead of what are you going to pay me? How many spins is this going to get? Are you going <laughs> to uh, follow me? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, and yeah, I mean, even just the act of sitting down with someone and writing, even if it doesn't pan out to, 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 to anything, I'm sure you still there's still such a well, one I'm sure an, an enjoyment out of that, but also you're always honing your skills. And so whether you're learning from someone or, or bouncing things around, even if nothing ever uh, commercially comes out of that, let's say it's not like it's a waste by any means. Was that a question? No, no, sorry. Just a, I, I, I guess an assumptive statement uh, uh, as I, as I consider, you know, you, you, you jamming with people or, or writing with people and, and maybe those things never you know, become anything. It's not like it's a waste of your time or anything like that. Would you, would you agree with that? It's never a waste of my time. Yeah. You know, um, Chuck, I died once. And so every moment for me is, uh, is a plus and, um, being able to hang out with people and talk music, you know, I'm not one of those guys that travels around with an acoustic guitar on them. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I love my job. I love what I do. I, I love being able to talk to people about it. Um, I don't always like uh, being the center of attention or, you know, going someplace with people and being interviewed. Um, yeah. yeah, I make some of the people that are with me on a regular basis really um, bored <laughs> to have to watch every time we go anyplace, somebody asks me, so what's it like? Sure. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I have to imagine that that's a, that's a reality, Dave. And, and, you are uh, you're recognizable. You know, there's probably no no hiding for you when you're uh, when you're out and about. Yeah, it's pretty pretty difficult. I wear a beanie and a hoodie, and I still get recognized because I guess it's <laughs> my, my chin or something. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's I think it's just your whole your whole presence, man. Uh, Dave Mustaine, thank you so much for hanging tonight, man. Truly, you know, I I just have to say, man, it is an honor, a privilege to get to share some time and space with you. Uh, as we celebrate, as we talk about all things Megadeth, uh, we've got all your tour dates right now at loudwire.com. Uh, you can always stay caught up with everything going on at megadeth.com. But Dave, man, uh, you know, the door is always open. Hopefully we can hang again soon on the show. Yeah, I would like that, Chuck. That wraps up this episode of Loudwire Nights On Demand. Stay caught up with everything happening in the world of rock and metal on the Loudwire app and at loudwire.com.